Well, it is just about 7 hours and 49 minutes into the day of Tuesday, October 20th, and i got to clear something out of my eyes. I hate it when something goes to my eyes. Typically, it's an eyelash, and so you got to, uh, not hard, but gently uh, sort of uh, brush it out. Uh, if you do it too hard, you end up damaging your eye, so you don't do that. And so you, ha but you still have something in the eye, so it's just a light pick here, like there. And and you, you a lot of times if you squeeze here, on the uh, tear ducts, uh, you stretch the eyelid enough so that the eyelash comes out. It it, it falls out of its place, and uh, therefore you've cleaned the eye. Sometimes there's all often resid residuals that are left behind. So <laughs> uh, how I how I uh, uh, work at maintaining my uh, how I work at maintaining my eyes. Uh, there always is maintenance to do and things to clean up, and sometimes things just pop up. Uh, uh, you know, it's not that you don't do it in the morning. Well, I don't actually have a morning, but what. I don't do it periodically throughout the day to clean my eyes and stuff like that, but just stuff forms on a regular basis that even afterwards uh, and it needs to be taken care of and so you take care of it as you uh, feel the need to uh, particularly if it's obstructing your vision uh, which is all important here because I'm doing an observational work and just went on to uh, uh, record some data I did just about uh, two hours worth of gaming and meditation. Things went very well. Uh, I've actually increased my meditation again. It's 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 not not a significant amount, but a, a good enough a good enough that it's a, uh, a noteworthy. I had been trying the uh, trying the uh, the longer four or five hour um, uh, meditation uh, on a daily basis. I've been able to. Uh, we're three weeks in now, and I'm able to able to sound like Porky Pig. I've been able to uh, maintain that schedule, so uh, it's become a normal thing. The bizarre thing is, but uh, it's, I guess it's hard to understand this. Uh, uh, I grew up in the church. I, I I literally did grow up in the church, so it was kind of like my second home. Uh, and meditation brings me back to that sort of state where uh, I'm back in church again. I get that feeling. And it's a nice, pleasant feeling. And yet there's so much, when I see out there, there's so much spiritual confusion. And it's always, they talk about self-love, and you got to love yourself. You gotta, and that's not, that's, these are things, I mean, it, it, let's not even look at it from the Christ, Christian perspective. Let's look at it from the Hindu perspective. Uh, and everyone knows about karma. Uh, some people who are in yoga may know about dharma. Well, the dharmic life, the spiritual life, is supposed to be selfless. And yet, the gurus are out there telling you, love yourself. Do things for you. Take a yudeo. Is this dharmic or not? If it's not dharmic, then that, you don't want to be in that direction. You don't Because the, the, the dharmic direction... Is a is a right hand path towards light. The anti dharmic path, the left hand path, is the path toward dark is towards darkness. And on that path, because the dharmic path is selfless, the anti dharmic path is selfish. So is you got to ask yourself: Is this whole thing of self love coming from these very polite gurus, very Sounding great. Is it left hand path towards darkness, towards selfishness, or is it dharmic to the right hand path towards selflessness, towards humility? This is the this is the dharmic path. Then you can judge the spiritual information. Ask yourself that that basic question: What path are you on? Anything, anything that presents itself as aiming at the self, pleasuring the self, pleasuring your body, is left-hand path. 
anything that is selfless, humbling, these experiences that are humbling, and some of these challenges are humbling, this is the Dharmic path. And this is how you sort of judge these gurus. And so I've been sort of seeing these again. This is from my Instagram uh, on my uh, Kawhi Tea House account. I'm just scrolling through things. And they're always talking about self-love this and self-love that. And they they have these oh, very, you know, nice uh, uh, laid out uh, gardens and ooh, and this and that. And they're going to they're gonna take care of themselves. And it's a me day and on and on and on about themselves. Yet the Dharmic path tells you very clearly, if you've studied this at all, that the right-hand path is selfless and based on humility. And when you see something that's anti-Dharmic, not on that path, you're going towards the left-hand path, you're going towards darkness. And there are people, there, there are practitioners of darkness out there who are using lures, the very nice things, they don't look bad in the beginning, at the beginning, and they lure you in. They lure you in. It's bit by bit, piece by piece, piece. The more you become selfish, the more you take your me day, the more you do this for yourself, the more it sucks you in. And that's the message of the day. The message of the day is take care of yourself. Don't worry about anyone else. Take care of yourself. You first and everybody else afterwards. This is anti-dharmic. This is not humility. This is not humble. This is not selfless. This is you for this is selfish, and it's left hand path anti dharmic, and this is things you need to watch. If you are intending to be more spiritual, then you need to learn about the spirituality. You need to learn what's out there. You know, learn that there are more than one simple, one, more than one path, and that a lot of times paths in the spiritual life look alike. You want to ask yourself not only what am I doing in the initial, where am I going in the future? What is further along the path? Is it leading me towards the right, to, you know, keep, keep maintaining me on the right, or in terms of living a more spiritual life, or is it slowly leading me down the left-hand path to, to, to physicality, to darkness, to selfishness? And these are the things we need to ask. We need to question these things. We need to understand these things. Well, it's just about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And this is an unboxing. So let's take a look and see what we get here. Number one. We got the package. Up. We got the uh, packaging off. Ah, very nice. This is look, looks like a case of drill bits. That's what I think it's gonna be. Yeah, uh, this is. These are different uh, screwdriver bits. Are different screwdriver bits right here. There you go. Very, very nice. So that's the first one. Now let's go take a look at the second one. So this is. So 
So it's definitely a smaller package. Oh, it's a it's a uh, uh, a second phone uh, a phone uh, carrier. I've got one on the I've got one on my 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 scooter already. Seems to work pretty well. This was a cheaper one that I got. I don't know how it's going to compare, but uh, we shall see. Well, that's what that is. <sighs> Your phone fits into the pouch like this. This seems to be like a wider one. Okay, yeah. Nice. Is it here? Hold the foam like that. Nice and wide. I'll have to show you the other one on the scooter with with it with with the uh, um something in it. I think the other one is the other one is a little bit bigger than bigger than this, so we'll have to sort of take a look and see whether which one is better. And it's got the tie down straps, which are, which is nice. Very good. Both things came in. The thing, two two new things that came came in that uh, I didn't really expect to come in, but uh, they're here. Uh, my my tool kit uh, for my drill set is more or less complete, and so yay for that. Well, it's the 21st of October in 2020. It's a Wednesday, and we're ending the vlog for Tuesday. And bizarrely enough, I think I've lost another day. I can't remember in terms of the actual dates. I can't remember. I remember being the, the, the 20th. But I don't know whether I made a mistake in the video and said it was the 20, it, it, whether it was the 19th or not. I'm not sure if I was correct in the in, in the actual vlog itself. That happens. Uh, I can check check the day and off, and I'll, I'll I'll mix things up. It's a level of fatigue. Is that what happens is that when I go to bed, and this is what's happening now. Uh, I just got up to do some gaming and, and some meditation. But when I get up. And this has to do a lot with the, with the things I dream about. I wake up like I've had a full amount of exercise. When you exercise or you weight lift or anything like that, your body goes into a, something known as a very full, uh, known as a full pump mode, where the muscles are all tightened and tense and so on and so forth. That's how I wake up. I wake up as if I am haven't had even have, I haven't even gone to bed. And the dreams are, are, are very active, very bizarre. Uh, they do contain multiple dimensions of existence, not dimensions in terms of length, height, and width. I've, there is also a number of different elements of time, time travel. Being other people, being other things. Being in a conversation with myself. Where in the dream I'm not all it was, but I am everybody. And I see how the consequences affect one person to the next. The consequences of my choices affect a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And, and 
it's daunting when you come out of these when, when you come out of these dreams. The, a large chunk of them are still with you. They're still playing over in your mind. And I don't think there's necessarily any. Um, hidden meanings in cases. Just what happens is, is that sometimes things are very bizarre. Sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. Sometimes there are things in there that, that you could have missed. And it's typically an understanding of an understanding that uh, well, you could have done better or, or, or you missed something in terms of how someone's personality is or uh, how they behave or why they behave the way they behave. Uh, these are the different elements that can sort of be within uh, the construction of the dream in terms of the sense of reality. And the other thing is, this is, I've said this before to other people, the conundrum that you have when you're dreaming, and people say, well, you know, this means that, and they go into the meaning of the dreams. Here's where the problem comes in with the meaning of the, the, of the dreams. The dreams are, are supposed to be of things you've already experienced. If you haven't experienced something, then you shouldn't be dreaming it. Yet this is not this is not this is not necessarily the case. You can be dreaming of something that you've never really experienced before. And I go back to the whole situation that I have had, uh, this is a number of recurring dreams. And one I can mention is where, where I've been SpongeBob SquarePants. So in terms of being other people, uh, well, being SpongeBob doesn't, doesn't, has no bearing on terms of, oh, that's my past life. Well, I was, well, at one point in time, I was SpongeBob SquarePants. Well, it wasn't. The SpongeBob SquarePants never actually exists. So being other people does not indicate a past life. Yet at the same time, as we discussed this, one of my recurring dreams that this is not is no longer a recurring dream is coming back uh, from church, which is in the downtown core of Toronto, and Toronto has gone through a number of developments and redevelopments. And as I come back up, I come back up Young Street because I know getting to my place I have to come back through by Young Street. Well, what happens? As I'm on Young Street, Young Street is no longer paved. It looks like the 1800s. And in order to cross the street, I have to contend with trains, steam trains, going up and down the street instead of not being hit by them. Of course, as you try to cross the street, that's when your legs start to fail you. I mean, you're walking up and down the sidewalk, no problem. But as soon as you cross that street, that's where that problem becomes, and your legs uh, start feeling like dead, like lead, and you slow down, and you can't cross tracks fast enough, and there is a steam train coming at you. Right? Stuff of nightmares. I learned, however, long ago that if I get hit by a train, and this is from when I was about 15 years old, you don't die in your dreams. You, 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 well, you do. In my case, I did die, but I went to other places after I died. So again, there was an after-death experience, or say an after-life experience. It was years later. I mean, maybe not, even twenty years later. This is when the internet finally came out, and it had been around for a while. And someone decided to take all these archived photos of Toronto and publish them. That's oh look at this one. You like trains, right? Here's the one the train. What is it? And it's Young Street full of trains. It's, a, it's the exact same picture that I had. What I had seen in my dream was in the picture. Figure that one out. 